Isn't it strange that it's about nine weeks already that we haven't been to shul? All of us, no one has been to shul for two and a half months. Has it ever happened in all of Jewish history that Yidin were prevented from going to shul globally everywhere? So it's interesting that the conclusion of this period, which it seems like we're coming to an end, that they're beginning to ease up and slowly we'll, Yidin will start trickling back into shul, is coinciding with this week's, this Shabbos, in which we're going to say the Haftarah of Machar Chodesh. And it could be that over here lies the key of, to understanding of what is going on, because we have to say that this is cosmic. When Shabbos comes out on any special occasion, Shabbos steps aside in order to honor the special occasion. Shabbos comes out, Hanukkah, this, that, it, oh, Shabbos always steps aside, meaning regarding the Haftorah, that we won't read the Parsha Sashavu Haftorah, we read a special Haftorah. And so it is with Rosh Chodesh. But the Chiddush about Rosh Chodesh, the novelty regarding Rosh Chodesh, is that even when Shabbos comes out on Erev Rosh Chodesh, Shabbos also steps aside. And we say a special Haftorah called Machar Chodesh. Tomorrow is Rosh Chodesh. Now, why would that be? We have to say that when Rosh Chodesh is tomorrow, today is also a Yom Tif. Today is also a significant day, significant enough that it overshadows the Parsha of the Parsha Sashavua, and we read the special of Torah of Machar Chodesh. What is the meaning of Machar Chodesh? Tomorrow is Rosh Chodesh. And why does that make today special? Because tomorrow is Rosh Chodesh. What is Rosh Chodesh? Rosh Chodesh is a renewal of the moon. The moon is, we see it in the sky and then it dwindles and disappears. And if one hasn't ever witnessed this before, they might think the moon will never return. And then suddenly, boom, the moon is back. So that's exciting. Why is it exciting? Because just like the moon is a recipient from sunlight, and that's how it shines the light. And even if it got distant from the sun, it comes back into the relationship and it's again receiving light from the sun. We too, as the recipients of God's light, we the Jewish people, as the recipients of Hashem's light in the world, we receive that light and shine that world on the world light on the world, there are times that we receive more light and we're shining brightly, and there are dark days, there's the days of Golos and so on and so forth. But we have a promise, just like the moon returns, so too the Jewish people will return. Another thing that's compared to the moon is Malchus based David, as it's apparent in Kiddush Levana, that Malchus based David, the kingdom of David HaMelech is compared to the moon, in that the moon, that the, the kingdom of David is powerful in the world, then it dwindles, then it disappears, in Golos there's no Jewish kingship, there's no Jewish sovereignty, and then it will return with the coming of Mashiach. And just like with the moon, the, 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 the moment before it's revealed, it is completely gone from the sky, so it is both with the Jewish people and with Malchus Beis David, that right before it is actually coming, it's being born again with new vigor and new light and new power, it disappears completely. But here is a deeper secret. It's not only that after it disappears, it will, it returns with, because it can, it can only be a new moon if it wasn't there before, but because it's the disappearing of the moon itself. It's that absence. It's that humility. It's that bittle. It's that nullification process, which triggers a new light. Because when the moon comes back, it doesn't mean it's just being restored to what it was before. It means it's now shining a higher and deeper light. In the days of Mashiach, it's not just going to be we're going to have the Beis Amigdash again. We're going to have a third Beis Amigdash, which is going to be infinitely greater than even the first Beis Amigdash. It's a much greater light. And in order to achieve that light, there needs to be a disappearance. It's hinted to in the content of the Haftarah where Yoinasan says to David that David is the moon, compared to the moon, David is Malchus. He says to him, Vinifkadita, you're going to be remembered, which means you're going to receive this great godly light, ki yipakid moishavecho, because your seat is going to be vacant. It's the vacancy itself that's going to create the vinifkadita. So perhaps, right before Mashiach comes, both in Malchus Beis David and in the Jewish people. In Malchus Beis David, there is a disappearance of Mashiach Tzedkenu in the world. Mashiach is present in the world till Erev the Geula, and then Mashiach is as if absent, we don't see him, it's not, it's not visible. And the same is also with the Jewish people, that they were, which are also uh, representing Malchus. 
that right before the Giyula, there is an absence of the Jewish people in front of Hashem. Where do we stand in front of Hashem? When we come to Shul. Now that for nine weeks we weren't in Shul, that's... Your seat has been vacant. And that is an indicator that we're going to experience the greatest Vinifkadita.